we're going to explore one application of trigonometry, which is the ability to find the area of any triangle using only a limited set of information. So let's take a triangle ABC, the vertex is at capital A, B, and C, the sides little a, little b, and little c. And if we want to find the area of that triangle, you'll recall from early geometry, the area of any triangle is equal to 1 half times the base times the height. Well, to create that base and height, we're going to have to draw an altitude from one of the vertices to an opposite side. Let's pick vertex A and draw an altitude H that goes perpendicular to the opposite side. And you can draw an altitude to any of the opposite sides, but we're just going to pick this one for this example. This creates two right triangles. Do you remember from tri trigonometry? The sine of angle B is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, in this case, H over C. We're trying to find out what H is, so let's solve this for H. So H is equal to C sine B if you multiply both sides by C. And if H, that altitude, that height is equal to C sine B, we can go back to that original formula from geometry, the area is 1 half times base times height. Substitute in, the base in this case is side A, and the height is C sine B. So the area of an oblique triangle is equal to 1 half times the two included sides times the sine of the angle between them. The area of any triangle is one half the product of the lengths of the two sides, any two sides, times the sine of their included angle. You must have two sides in their included angle, that's SAS, for this to work. And depending on how you draw the altitude or what angle you're using, you can use any of the three angles as long as you have their included sides. Let's look at some examples. To be able to use this area of formula, you have to know one of the angles and its two included sides. So in this triangle, we don't have all that information. We have two angles, but neither of the angles has both their included sides. Well, let's use a little bit of geometry. We know the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So that third angle is going to be 150 degrees. Now we have an angle and its two included sides. So the area of this triangle is going to be 1 half times 4 times 10 times the sine of 150 degrees, and that's going to be 10 units squared. Now, how do you find the area of this parallelogram? Well, at first glance, that doesn't look like it has anything to do with triangles, but if you recall when we developed the area of a parallelogram in geometry, we split it up into two congruent triangles. Let's do that. We'll create a diagonal down the middle, splitting this up into two congruent triangles, both of which we know the an angle and its two included sides are. Therefore, the area of the entire parallelogram is going to be two times the area of each of these triangles, which would be two times one half times the two sides, 8 and 12.5, times the sine of 40 degrees. And that gives you approximately 64.3 square centimeters. Let's say we know the area of a triangle and we know two of its sides, but we want to find the measure of the angle between them. So here's a triangle that has an area of 5 centimeters squared. We know two of the sides are of length 4 and 5 centimeters. What's the angle measure between them? So we can kind of go backwards with that formula. We'll say that the area of 5 is equal to 1 half times 4 times 5 times the sine of the angle we're trying to find. So if we solve this in terms of sine c, we get that the sine of c is 1 half. And if you'll recall, there are going to be two angles that have a sine of 1 half. Both one is in quadrant 1, 30 degrees, and the other one is quadrant 2, 180 minus 30, or 150 degrees. And you get that by using the inverse sine. Now remember, the inverse sine is only going to return one of those angles, but you have to realize that two possible angles can have a sine of 1 half. That creates two possible triangles, those two different angles. One, a 30 degree triangle, creates an acute triangle with angle C of 30 degrees and sides of 4 and 5. Or we can have an obtuse triangle with an angle C of 150, also with sides in 5 and 4. Now you know how to find the area of any triangle by knowing one of the angles and its two included sides.